Hi everyone, we're doing some more life in jars today. Um, these are all going to be really small ones. I've got some plants, this this one doesn't look very happy. I think it's drying out too much. This one's just really pretty, although it needs some leaves removing. I've got various jars. This is a hang on the wall one. See it's got a hole in the back. I've got a stemless wine glass. And this cute little jar I got from a bargain shop somewhere. So, this looks like it could do the little bit of a wipe, I'll give it a clean. And I've got some things to go in these, because I think this little jar I want to make into a tiny, tiny aquarium. I'm going to fill this one up with water. And the idea will be, that will be a little self-sustaining ecosystem, aquatic. I've got some little plants to go in it, and I've got some little snails. Little tiny snails, they're just pond snails. And because it's going to be very new at first, I'm going to break off a little tiny bit of this fish food stick and drop in for them. So that's project project one. Then we've got the wall one, and then we've got the glass. And those will be fairly traditional terrariums. And uh, Kermit has snuck in from my other channel to supervise, as you can see. So let's uh, let's crack on. Number one, then, let's get the little aquarium out of the way. So I'm going to put in bottom of here a little bit of aqua soil just to get things started and to give the plants something to root into. So what we're going to do is recycle some aqua soil from a previous project because I don't like to waste. This does mean though it's not going to have so much nutrient in it. So I have actually sprinkled a, a bit from a, a root tab in there already. And first of all I'm going to put a little layer of carbon in the bottom because I find that helps just to keep the water sweet when it's new. So this is just aquarium carbon that they use in filters. So just putting a little bit of that in as you can see. And next thing then the soil. These are ice cream so scoops. Dead handy. Now the soil has probably got bits of carbon in it, it's got bits of all sorts, probably bits of, garden, of uh, regular compost. It's a little bit of everything so I am going to be weighting it down because this isn't all aqua soil as you can probably see. It's a bit of a mix. And when I say weighting it down I mean I'm going to be putting some gravel on top of it. So I'm trying to keep my little space clean here for you. You will know if you do anything crafty, particularly if it's got compost involved, your space is going to get messy. <laughs> so that's just a little layer. Now, as I said, I am going to put a little bit of gravel on top of that. Now, the gravel I've got is, would you believe, budgie grit. Now, that might distort the pH of the water. It might have salt in it. I'm not sure what it's going to do to be perfectly honest but hopefully um, the little snails will be fine with it because I've never had a problem with it before. So let's see how it goes. These are the flora tabs by the way. Actually I'm going to put a bit more because I don't think I've got enough considering this is a root tab, so that's what they're called, because um, I, yeah, there's a bit more soil than I intended. So I'm going to break up, if I can, to get the scissors. Just a little bit more. I'm going to go for a quarter of one. And I'm going to drop that down into the soil in the middle. Let's just give it a bit extra. I wasn't convinced I'd put enough in because I am recycling, as I said, with the soil here. Right, let's get the budgie grit. Okay, so I've put a layer of the budgie grit in and I have just tapped it down a little bit and I've cleaned the glass with my little spongy stick. So I hope you can hope you can see okay and I have zoomed you in. Right, now this is the one that, I, as I said, the water, this is going to be our little water feature. So the first things I need to do is sort out the plants. I've got some floating plants, well a floating plant anyway, and I've got some little little diddy plants to put in. I've got some stem plants. Well, one's more of a carpeting plant, but this one's definitely a stem plant. And I can't find my tweezers that have got uh, like a hooked end. 
so I'm going to hope I can manage with these ones today. You'll notice this is very small so I'm not really worrying about much in the way of hardscaping, although I have got a little rock that I might pop in. It's just a little bit of rock from our front garden and it's quite nice, I think. I might make like, let's see, will it go crossways? Or does it need to stand up a bit? Because I'm thinking it might make quite a nice little retainer. So this little plant will get taller. So let's let's use that as a yeah a little feature, and it'll make that little back area a bit deeper, and that little plant's roots will go down into the the soil below. Now, this I believe is called Monte Carlo. It's a very small leafed. It's a sort of a stem plant in a way but it'll creep across and carpet it'll make like a little bush so this can go in the foreground now the way I'm going to do this is try to bury because these are cuttings so I'm going to try and bury that whole end into the substrate might have to bring the substrate up over it it all just sticks to my tweezers. I don't know how the people who do this professionally get everything to stay where it's supposed to be. They make it look so easy. <laughs> what I have got is some other little bits of slate that I might drop in there just to help that stay in place. And also I think it'll give it a little bit more texture at the front there. So I'll just grab those. I can't even remember where these little bits of slate came from, but they look just about right for doing this sort of thing with. So, will this spoon go in? Yeah. Nice, aren't they? They were from my. They were in my model railway scenery kit. Um, so, whether I got them from somewhere like model railway stuff, I don't know. But that should keep that down, and I think that goes. That creates a nice extra texture. Right, next will be water. So before I put the water in, let's just show you what we've got so far. Looks quite sweet, doesn't it? And now I'm going to carefully pour the water onto that little piece of slate, because then I won't disturb the gravel too much, hopefully. Now this will probably go cloudy at first and I'll end up water changing it in a moment because there's going to be a certain amount of dust that's going to come off the budgie grit and the soil and the rock and everything really. So as you can see there's a bit of gunk floating up onto the surface. There. So I'm going to take that away into the bathroom, just rinse that out a little bit, drain that water off and top it back up again. So there we are, final little top up. I'm going to pop my little floating plant on. And I think, I think you'll agree, that looks quite sweet. Now what I'll do is in a couple of weeks time, I'll, I need to do a round of updating everybody on the way all the little tanks and things and the little terrariums are all going anyway. So I'll do you a proper update on it. Of course the only remaining thing to do is put some little snails in. And... I'm only going to put three, they're tiny little snails anyway, they don't get much bigger than this. Oops, I think that's four. Okay, five, because they all kind of want to hang together. These ones, I got them out of the tank, they were being a clump. Um, I'll probably end up with a lot more snails. <laughs> that's probably what's going to happen. Um, so I'll keep an eye on the population numbers in here, because that's quite a lot of little snails <laughs> for such a small setup. Now I'm leaving a bit of room for air at the top. Now the plants of course will create air and filter the water. The snails will eat algae and any dead bits of plants and they will poop which will feed the plants. So how does that sound folks? Right I'll bring you in for a close up on this one. So there we are. Isn't that cute? And we'll see what the little snails do now. 
So that I'm going to put somewhere where it's well lit but not in direct sunlight. And uh, as I said, we'll, uh, I'll do you a little show of what that looks like in a couple of weeks' time. Okay, on to our next one. This is going to be a really simple one. I'm going to put a little drainage layer in the bottom, some compost and a plant. This is going to be really simple. Just remembered something I meant to put in with my little aquarium. I'm going to put a botanical of some sort in there. I might pop just an acorn cup in. I've got, oh look, it's a really small one. That'd be good. Oops. So yeah, I've just remembered I should have put a little botanical of some sort in that little tiny aquarium. The snails will thank me for that. And I meant to put that bit of, that, a little half of one of these pond sticks in as well. So I will go and do that shortly. Right, moving on to this one then for the drainage layer. And actually, this is quite chunky, but it's it's uh, lava rock granules. So I'm going to pop that in. I might put a little bit of the carbon as well that I use in the fish tanks because um, again, it'll help to keep the any moisture in there sweet. And then I'm going to put a little bit of mesh in to make that drainage layer barrier. And the mesh that I've got is just. I think it's the stuff they use to keep bugs out of your house in hot climates. So I'm just going to cut a little circle of this that's going to be roughly, roughly-ish the right size, sort of. It doesn't need to be accurate and it doesn't even need to be very round as you can see. Because that will then go up the sides of the little glass a little bit. That might be a bit too big still. Yeah it is. I'll take a little bit more off that. But yeah, it's fine if it goes up the sides a bit, so it doesn't have to fit perfectly. It's just to retain the soil, to stop the soil dropping down into the, what will be the drainage layer. Because most plants don't want their roots completely sopping wet unless they're actually aquatic plants. That'll do nicely. So, soil can go in on top. And you know what? I'm going to use the rest of this aqua soil, I think. So we want another bit of a root tab. These, as I say, these are root tabs actually intended for aquariums, but I don't see why you shouldn't use it for anything, because basically it's plant food. So I'm going to scrunch that up a bit. I'm going to use some scissors actually to scrunch that up a bit. There we go. So I've just broken that into some little bits and I'll put that in the first layer. As I say, we're now down in this pot to the layer of soil that is more compost than it is aqua soil anyway. This little pot was just a bit of a mix up of all sorts of stuff I got kicking around basically. Now there isn't much room for any sort of landscapey fanciness in this one. It is only a wine glass. So I'm just going to pop the little plant in on the top and sort the soil around it. Now this plant is unhappy. I can see it is very unhappy. Um, let me just get a tray because I'm about to make an almighty mess with the compost. So this is one of my old painting trays. The kids craft trays, I buy them in bulk. <laughs> so, yes, I think I've got, I've let it dry out too much and then I've let it get waterlogged. I've gone from one extreme to the other. So I'm hoping it'll perk up, but I think it wants to be in a more moist atmosphere. And I was hoping that when I pull it apart, that there might be actually more than one plant here. Or a plant that I can separate. It'd be better to wash and rinse the roots actually. Yes, I think I can separate this. Because then I can put a bit in each. There we are. We've got two little roots there. 
So I'm going to give it twice the chance to survive really. So let's get a bit more of this soil out and fan the roots out a little bit more. And then we're just going to pop him in, like so. Let's put this out of the way. Now this little guy is going to need obviously some more soil around him. So let's push him down first and then I will top the soil up. I might go and get a bit of moss to put around as well. So just pushing him down a little bit. Fluffing the soil around him. And I've got here a tub of the sorted aquarium compost. Um, terrarium compost and various other bits of I've emptied out of things it's got plant food in it and all sorts now you're not meant to put too much in the way of plant food when you're doing terrariums because obviously you don't want them to get too big do you however I do like to put a little bit. Now somebody's going to tell me off for that, I'm sure, because there is nutrient in the soil, and this is this is uh, fresher stuff, anyway. And the other thing I shall be putting in though, and I hope the sides are sloped enough that they don't escape, and they do boing around a bit, and that's springtails. Now springtails are tiny little bugs that help to keep your terrariums healthy, because they eat any mould and general eek that can build up in your little terrarium. So on that basis I am going to be leaving the surface clean like so but I will put with my little bugs uh, a little bit of sort of dying, dead leaf. I've got some bits of dried leaf that have got their food on them. Now this is a rescue mission as you can see. This plant may or may not make it. Let's see what happens. But the next job is to spray it. And I have actually filled my bottle up with um, rainwater now as well. We've got a big water butt outside, so I just went and did it with that. So let's clean the glass a bit for you. And yeah, let's, let's hope this little fern makes it. Because that, other than the bugs, is all I'm going to put in. So talking of bugs, I've got two little colonies of springtails going. Can you see in there there's little white things running around? There's also little flying things that come out whenever I open this. I don't know what those are but they don't seem to be doing any harm. So there we go. There's a little bit of leaf and it has got some springtails on it. So I'm going to push that just down the back there. Now I'm also going to find a bit of leaf that's got a bit of their food on it and this has. I'll feed them again later. That's just got a little bit of it's yeast on it. Now mould grows on yeast because, and I'm doing that because at first there's not going to be anything for the little guys to eat in there. So that's that done. And obviously, although I've sprayed it, I'm going to give it a bit more water. Now this isn't going to be sealed, so it will dry and it will need watering every so often. But hopefully popping it in this little glass, that little reservoir area I created at the bottom, will keep some water in it without waterlogging the roots of the little fern. There you go. Sorry, you're out of shot, weren't you? Yeah, so the little reservoir I've created in there will keep some water in it without waterlogging the soil. Hopefully the soil will just keep damp. And although this is going to be an open jar, unless I do decide to put a little cover over the top of it, but I don't think I will, then um, I, it will dry in time. So I do need to pop uh, a bit, little drop of water in every so often. But I'm trying, I'm going to try not to waterlog it. I'm going to try and do it by more by spraying it. So that's that one done. And the other piece of that fern, which now this is an interesting thing. It hangs on a wall. Now I'm going to hang it on one of my IKEA pegboards. Again, somewhere where it'll get plenty of light. But it's a nice shape. The only problem I can see with this is it's, it's, it's going to be awkward to get in through this opening to do the things I want to do. So the first thing is, again, get that drainage layer sorted. So 
So exactly the same routine. We're going to put in some of this lava rock. Need to get some more of this. I'm getting a bit low on it. I have got a bit more space to play with in this one, which is good. And it is designed for this sort of thing. You're meant to keep beta fish in them and things like that. But I think that would be cruel because that is way too small for any fish. Beaters need more room than people give them credit for. Again, I'm just going to put a little bit of the charcoal in with it too, just to help keep that sweet. And now we want another bit of mesh. We go a bit bigger this time, can't we? <laughs> Just talk amongst yourselves for a minute. That should do. Yeah, that'll be fine. So, in with the soil. Now, this has the potential to get messy. I need to stand this on something so it doesn't tip over, don't I? I could stand it in that flower pot, but that's a bit lightweight. There we go, a little glass bowl. So, spoon to put our soil in. I'm going to use a little long handled, I've got some long handled plastic spoons. I am going to be naughty and drop in a bit of root tab again. Again, this is fresh soil, but I, I like to go, I, I tend to do too much really, don't I? Should be enough goodness in this soil anyway, really. But I do like to give, I like to spoil my plants and they'll probably grow way too fast. Or it'll overfeed them and kill them. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Now I'm going to bank this up a bit towards the back. Again, I don't think I'm. Oops, I don't think I'm going to be putting anything in the way of hardscaping in. Maybe a bit of gravel or something, just to give it a bit of texture. I don't know. I might go and get some moss from out the front of the house again as well. I do like moss, and we've got incredible areas of cushion moss mostly where it shouldn't be now as me saying I'll bank it up at the back the problem is actually that um, the the way this is going to hang it will tip itself at a bit of an angle anyway so maybe I should go fairly flat right push this down a little bit it's moving around on that piece of mesh <laughs> So if I do it fairly flat when it's up on the wall, it'll be it'll be hung at an angle anyway. Now I should get my cork on a stick. That would be really good for doing this with. But I uh, don't quite know where it is. Now, do I take cuttings off this or do I put the whole plant in? You know what? I think I might go for the whole plant this time. Oh, you know what? Look at this. It's several little plants. So. Let's take one out and replant the original somewhere. This is the thing, very often you, you do find you end up with more plants than you bargained for. Because they do tend to put several in a pot. Is that another plant? That's no, just a leaf. Look at the good roots on that. Look at that. Isn't that good roots? So yeah, let's push him in as that is. I think what I will do though is take off a couple of leaves because there's a couple of them aren't looking so good. So we might as well start off with all fresh leaves, mightn't we? A bit less maintenance further on down the line. And maybe I'll take this one off just because it's a bit big. And that actually allows me to trim that whole stick off. There we are what my neighbours are doing. If you hear tapping, that is not from coming from in my house. That is my neighbours are doing something. <laughs> Oops. 
Now this is moving around on this uh, this base rather more than I want it to, which is annoying. Because I'm trying to get this little guy to go down without disturbing all that work I've done in the bottom. There we are. Yeah, I think I might grab a little piece of uh, piece of slate for this as well from out the front of the house while I'm out looking for moss, I don't know. Just give it a bit of interest, I suppose. And now our little fern. Let's see what we've got here. There's a definite root there. I've managed to, I have broken off a decent amount of root with that little baby. So let's push him in. Oops. And again, this is all, I don't know if you can see this, it's moving around because of that drainage layer and the mesh. <laughs> Okay, that's rather sweet, isn't it? And I think that's enough to go in there. So I'm just going to put a little bit more soil. Mostly towards the back to protect the roots of the little Fitonia. Because they are coming up out of the soil a bit. But I'm going to go and get some moss. So I'll do that next and maybe get a little piece of stone to go in there. Well, that's what I call a result. I found a random bit of stone that I've got no idea what it was doing out there because it doesn't match any of the stones in our garden. And some gorgeous bits of cushion moss. So, just going to put the little stone in the middle there. Oops. Just to create that little bit of something, a bit of interest. And look at this lovely moss. We've had a frost, a couple of really bitterly cold days, although no snow, and the I couldn't do anything about picking moss. It was all frozen and it, it didn't look happy. But of course what happens as soon as it all thaws is the moss goes crazy. It's extremely happy and it's just wet and miserable out there today and fairly mild. So this was just growing out of our garden wall and it's lovely. Now again I'm going to want to put, probably put some spring towels in there. There seem to be bugs coming up out of the compost and all sorts anyway. Um, I don't know what those are but never mind. So there we are, we have got what I hope will be moss that will spread and that that little fern again will survive. So let's give it a spray and then I will put it in place. I'm also going to repot the parent plant. Where's my spray? Yeah, I'm going to repot the parent plant because we'll want to see that that is well looked after as well. The parent plant, so it was the twin wasn't it really? So I will scoop this up so that you can have a look at it in a moment. And again, I think I will put a couple of spring towels in. I don't think they'll boing enough to jump out of here. Let's see what spring towel colony B is looking like. This one wasn't looking as quite as uh, lively when I last looked in. No, there's some in there, but for some reason this one doesn't do as well. I don't know why. So I don't think I'm going to take any out of those little patches. It's starting to go. Yeah, I don't think I'll take any out of this one just yet. Let's let that one get a bit livelier first. Back to Springtail Colony A. And there's a cute little leaf there that's got a bit of their food on it. So let's put that in. And now we've got to find some critters. Now look, there's loads of critters there. Look at that lot. So actually, you know what? Let's have that leaf. Has that got still some on it? No, they've all run away. <laughs> Come on, little guys. You're going to a new home. Nothing to be afraid of. 
we're all running away, I know. Let's scoop up a little bit of the soil. There, that's got some on it. And let's just pop that in the front there and rescue the fern from underneath it. <laughs> oh, there's a load there. That's way more than it needs. So we have we have some little pots and plants and things and yeah. Can you see the little springtails running around in there? So that's what we've got here. Let me try and clean some of the glass off a little bit more for you. But I think that's going to look really nice and I'm going to hook it on the wall through that little hole. Hope the springtails don't jump out everywhere. Right, I'll get them all sorted and I will do I'll show you where they're going to live. Right, so here we are. There's some little cuttings I've got going as well. There's our little sphere. I hope you can see around the light from the window. So let's see how that gets on. There's the unhappy fern, which I hope will be a lot happier with a bit more of a humid environment going on. The little aquarium, the snails are off exploring and I have dropped in um, a leaf and that little tiny acorn cup. They will sink in time. But the snails are, there's one, they're off exploring around the tank and they seem happy. The remaining little pink phytonia turned out to be two little pink phytonias. So I put that in a little tiny pot that I made a couple of days ago with a little fern. And this little fern needs a bit of love, so I'm going to do something with that next. But anyway, yes, there is my little plant corner in my craft room. Hope you enjoyed this one. Um, obviously, if you want to see what I do with all this stuff, have a look at my other channel. It's called Mini Scenes GB and the link for it will be down below. If you like this channel, I'm just chucking random stuff on here. I hope you're finding it fun. There's all sorts to come. I know I'm having a terrarium and, a, and aquarium and paludarium phase, but there will be all sorts going on in, on this channel in time. So, uh, yeah, do feel free to subscribe. Let me have your comments. This is all very much amateurish. This channel does tend to be a lot of me not having a clue what I'm doing and just having a go, as you know. But I hope you're finding it fun as much as I am. So I'll give you an update on all these soon. See you soon, folks. Bye.